Somewhere in the swampy goodness south of Miami lies a forgotten secret. A place, actually, lost amongst the alligators and sawgrass of the Florida Everglades. It's big, about 25,000 acres and dotted with a couple dozen heavily reinforced concrete buildings interspersed by long, straight roads. Oh, and there's a rocket engine there, too. Big one. The largest solid fuel rocket engine ever built. And it's been sitting in its silo since its last test firing in 1967. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Developed in the colicky stages of the Cold War, the launch of Russia's Sputnik satellite in 1957 was a kick in the ass for the United States. For three months, the little silver ball cruised overhead, an annoying reminder for the U.S. to up its technology game. For President Kennedy, this meant going to the moon, something that would require thousands of people, all working together, to slingshot a manned capsule into space. Aerojet General was one of those companies. You are hearing the actual signals transmitted by the Earth-circling satellite. One of the great scientific feats of the age. Until that point, the Manhattan Project had been the largest R&D effort ever mounted in the United States. But, at almost $100 billion in today's dollars, the Apollo mission was five times larger. And so, in 1963, the U.S. Air Force gave Aerojet General $3 million to develop a rocket plant outside of Homestead, Florida. Good lord, it's hot. It's like being in Florida. Oh yeah, we are in Florida. So the property itself is huge. It used to be about 75,000 acres. Now it's around 25,000 with about 20 buildings still left on the property, each with their own specific purpose and a lot of space in between because building rockets is a lot different than say, making donuts. So a catastrophe in one building could easily devastate the whole complex. Just ask anyone who runs a math lab. Without a map, it's actually, you know, we've looked at the overhead and aerial views of it, but when you're down here, it's very, very easy to get lost really quick because a lot of the buildings look alike, square, concrete structures, and then the roads just seem to go nowhere and everywhere all at once. And the one thing you notice is that there's nobody around ever. Just the, the sound of the, the rain and the water dripping. It'd be a great haunted house. Inside here, we've got the 260 inch diameter rocket casing, which is still in the ground. The pit itself is about 150 feet deep. The rocket is 100 feet. <laughs> Now this is the largest solid fuel rocket motor ever built. By 1965, the first of the two massive motor casings arrived from Sunship and Dry Dock Company of Chester, Pennsylvania. These are cables that were actually tied to the igniter that sat on top of the motor. Now, as the igniter blew off the cap, the cables kept it down tied to the ground and it swiveled over here.
I think it's where they uh, put the scientists when they were bad. Did you see the tree coming out of the roof? By 1969, NASA had chosen to go with a more easily controllable liquid fuel for the Saturn V, and the Florida facilities for Aerojet General started their long, slow glide into oblivion. Later, the plant was devastated by Hurricane Andrew in 92, which passed directly overhead, and was acquired in 1999 by the South Florida Water Management District, who still manages the property to this day. Oh, if it sounds like a great place to explore, well, for better or worse, the silo was capped with concrete and its shed dismantled a couple years back, but the engine still remains. <laughs>